Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 13th of May. Indian PM Modi pitches for reforms in WHO streamlining approval process for vaccines. Sri Lanka reels under crisis as citizens reject new PM Vikram Asinghe. And Nepal holds crucial local election in single phase. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has called for World Health Organization's reforms and flexibility in trade-related aspects of intellectual property rights for equitable vaccine distribution at the second global COVID-19 summit. Addressing the summit, which he attended at the invitation of US President Joe Biden on Thursday evening, PM Modi also stressed that a coordinated global response is required to combat future health emergencies. Days after India refuted the World Health Organization's figures for deaths during the COVID pandemic, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday said that UN health body WHO must be reformed to build a more resilient global health security architecture and specially pitched for streamlining its approval process for vaccines at the second global COVID-19 summit. The summit themed Preventing Pandemic Fatigue and Prioritizing Preparedness was hosted by U.S. President Joe Biden. PM Modi also called for flexibility in trade-related aspects of intellectual property rights for equitable vaccine distribution. We must build a resilient global supply chain and enable equitable access to vaccines and medicines. WTO rules particularly the trips, need to be more flexible. WHO must be reformed and strengthened to build a more resilient global health security architecture. Referring to India's handling of the pandemic, PM Modi said the country has fully vaccinated almost 90% of the adult population and more than 50 million children. The second global COVID-19 summit has gathered more than 3 billion US dollars in new funding to fight the pandemic, a White House fact sheet showed on Thursday. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's new Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe assumed office on Friday and met with Indian and Japanese envoys a day after the president appointed the veteran opposition politician for the post amid the country's worsening economic and political crisis. Sri Lanka's main opposition party has joined anti-government protesters in rejecting Vikramasinghe's appointment and insisted on President Rajapaksa's resignation. Sri Lanka's new Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe on Friday assumed office as he began forming a unity government. A day after President Gotabaya Rajapaksa appointed the veteran opposition politician into office after his elder brother Mahinda Rajapaksa quit from the post amid the country's worsening crisis. Vikramasinghe, who faces the challenge of uniting a fractured parliament to tackle soaring inflation and dwindling foreign reserves, held separate bilateral meetings with Indian and Japanese envoys after assuming the role for the fifth time. However, citizens on streets of Colombo and anti-government protesters camped outside the Prime Minister's office for over a month, rejected Vikramasinghe's appointment and insisted President Rajapaksa's resignation who they say is ultimately responsible for the worst economic crisis since the independence in 1948. We haven't accepted the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister has been appointed by their discretions. It's not the people's demands that have been met. Our demands have been out here and it has been simply, plainly put out there asking Gota to go home. An ongoing curfew was lifted for about eight hours on Friday after a week of nationwide violent clashes between protesters and government supporters left at least nine people dead and over 300 injured. Sri Lanka's main opposition party said on Friday it will also join anti-government protesters 
in rejecting Vikramasinghe's appointment. In news from Pakistan, the top leadership of Pakistan Muslim League, Nawaz, has received the policy line from Party Supremo Nawaz Sharif to purge the country of the filth spread by the previous PTI government. Three government ministers said on Thursday after a meeting with the former Premier in London. The ministers blamed ousted Prime Minister Imran Khan of destroying the economy as Pakistan grapples with a widening current account deficit and a record high inflation. The senior leadership of PMLN, Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, received the policy line from Party Supremo Nawaz Sharif in a meeting in London to purge the country of the filth spread by the previous government led by the ousted Premier Imran Khan in the past four years, three government ministers said on Thursday. Talking to reporters, the minister said that they discussed the ongoing political, economic and constitutional crisis and Nawaz Sharif's vision will soon be implemented with the consent of government allies. Interior Minister Rana Sanaullah blamed ousted Premier Imran Khan of destroying the economy as Pakistan grapples with a widening current account deficit and a record high inflation. और मियां नवाशी साहब ने बतौर पार्टी लीडर उन्होंने जो विजन जो सोच हमें दी है उसको हम क्योंकि इत्तहादी हुकूमत है हम बाकी इत्तहादियों के साथ मिलके जो है वो उसको इंप्लीमेंट करेंगे और हम कोशिश करेंगे कि ये गंद जो है इसने जो जिस तरह से मुल्क का बिड़ा गर किया है इकोनॉमी का बिड़ा गर किया है और हमारी सियासी रवायत का जो है इसने बढ़ा बढ़ा है Planning Minister Ahsan Iqbal blamed that Imran Khan was running an organized campaign against institution and wanted to create a situation of civil war in the country. The remark came as PTI party chairman Imran Khan has repeatedly aired allegations that US along with leaders of the incumbent government conspired to oust him as premier and has demanded snap elections. He is also scheduled to hold a long march rally to capital Islamabad after May 20. Moving on, Lieutenant General Faiz Hamid, who served as the Director General of Pakistan's spy agency ISI before being appointed as the Peshawar Corps Commander, has been in the spotlight ever since the country has been gripped by a political crisis. The Pakistan Army has reacted to comments made by politicians that he has been sidelined terming them imprudent and inappropriate. Pakistan Army on Thursday deplored claims that former chief of spy agency ISI Inter-Services Intelligence Lieutenant General Faiz Hamid, who currently commands the Peshawar Corps, was sidelined, urging politicians to avoid making inappropriate statements and dragging the military into politics. Chief Military Spokesperson General Babar Iftikhar in a statement said, Imprudent comments made by important senior politicians recently about Corps Commander Peshawar are very inappropriate. Such statements undermine the honour and morale of the institution and its leadership. Although he did not mention anyone by name, the statement came after former President Asif Ali Zardari said on Wednesday that helpless Fez had been sidelined. But Zardari later said his comments were taken out of context. Earlier on Thursday, PMLN Party Vice President Maryam Nawaz also told reporters that the army chief should be a person who had a flawless reputation, free from any criticism or doubts. Her comments followed after she told a public rally last week that ousted Premier Imran Khan used the former spy chief to throttle his opponents. This comes as incumbent Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa is set to retire by November 29, when his second three-year tenure will end. Earlier this week, newly appointed Defence Minister Khawaja Asif said, if Faiz Hamid's name would be in the seniority list, then the government will consider him for the post. There were speculations that former Prime Minister Imran Khan, during his tenure, wanted to appoint Faiz Hamid as the next Army Chief as he was also not in favour of posting him out of the ISI. But the country's all-powerful army establishment raised objections, reports suggested. The group of seven G7 foreign ministers on Thursday said the increasing restrictions imposed by the Taliban on the rights of women and girls in Afghanistan were isolating the country. Taliban in its new decree ordered women to cover their faces in public, a return to their signature policy of past hardline rule and an escalation of restrictions. 
G7 foreign ministers of Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, the United Kingdom and the United States and the high representative of the European Union on Thursday said that increasing restrictions imposed by the Taliban on the rights of women and girls in Afghanistan were isolating the country. The G7 foreign ministers and European Union foreign policy chiefs said with these measures, the Taliban are further isolating themselves from international community. In a joint statement published by France, they called on the Taliban to take urgent action to lift restrictions on women and girls and respect their human rights. The Taliban, who swept back to power as the Afghan government collapsed last year on Saturday, ordered women to cover their faces in public in another step towards their past hardline rule. The group's supreme leader said if a woman did not cover her face outside home, her father or closest male relative would be visited and face potential prison or firing from state jobs. Meanwhile, following a United Nations Security Council meeting Thursday about Taliban's new decree, the representative of the United Kingdom spoke out in strident terms against the order. So it's regressive. It's wrong, and I think it underlines the Taliban's inability to lead Afghanistan out of its current economic and social and humanitarian crisis. UN Special Envoy for Afghanistan Deborah Lyons briefed the 15-member council, said Norway's UN mission, which requested the closed-door meeting to address the increased restrictions on human rights and freedoms of girls and women. Under the Taliban's previous rule from 1996 to 2001, women had to cover up, could not work and girls were banned from school. But after seizing power in August, they vowed to respect women's rights. However, in March, the Taliban backtracked on the announcement that high schools would open for girls, saying they would remain closed until a plan was drawn up in accordance with Islamic law for them to reopen. In news from Nepal, Nepal on Friday held the crucial local election in a single phase to choose over 35,000 representatives for 753 local bodies for the next five years. It was the second local body election in the Himalayan nation after the promulgation of a new constitution in 2015. People across Nepal cast their vote in the single phase crucial local election on Friday. Voting was held for 753 local bodies to choose a total of 35,221 representatives for the next five years. This was the second time people voted in the local election after the promulgation of constitution in 2015 and the transition to federalism. The Himalayan nation had held the poll for the first time in 2017, two decades after the restoration of democracy in 1990. The CPN-UML and the cpn Moist Centre Alliance had then secured majority in the local as well as provincial and federal elections. A public Chinese action, Bohokama Laksan, Kim, Nele Tangudaina, educated Manche Compson. Over 17 million people were eligible to cast their vote for the polling. The local election held significance as it marked the first periodic polls, which are the hallmark of democracy of the Federal Republic. After a two year hiatus, the Bangladesh Denim Expo was held in the Bangladeshi capital of Dhaka, the world's second largest ready made garment exporter of this week. The two-day-long expo attracted a total of 79 participants from about 10 countries and over 6,000 visitors, offering international fashion buyers a one-stop sourcing platform for all aspects of jeans wear. Exclusive to authorized trade visitors, the expo acts as an important platform for players in the international denim trade to mingle with other people of the fraternity, make new contacts and broker deals. According to the organizers, this year's Denim Expo addressed the new opportunities for successful and sustainable business in a world that now demands the industry leaders to go beyond business. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.